you think there might be, by some estimates, 40,000 DC fast chargers in the U.S. now, there needs to be several million minimum uh, to support, you know, the kind of transformation in the U.S. fleet that we're talking about. So they're going to come into the mainstream. Is the grid ready? I think both of you already mentioned that today. I think that's one of the big, big questions. Uh, the answer is the grid, the grid will be ready. If every single vehicle today magically converted overnight, that would cause a problem. But this is something that we see coming. We are actively working on this every day. And ultimately, it's a, it's a serving the load issue, which is something that is a core competency for a utility. Uh, we did it back in the 30s with electrification. We did it with air conditioners. So it's something that we are going to be ready for. First impacts like tightening of, of capacity is that that local sub yeah sub level. Um, and so, yeah, we have to look at that really closely. I think we consumers have already been doing a lot of upgrades over the years for those um, substations, but that's where we're, we're tracking very closely. Where are EVs going on the grid? Where might there be a substation that's going to get overwhelmed? Let's say every vehicle produced in 2035 is an electric vehicle, which a lot of people are predicting. You would have 75 million electric vehicles. You'd still have 200 million ICE vehicles. That's mm -hmm. That's in 12 years from now or 13 years from now. So uh, just like the cell phone, when the, when the smartphones came in, you know, it, it, it grew over time and then all this infrastructure support. Um, you know, the grid is built to handle that peak load, which historically has been between 3 to 5 p.m. when everyone comes home and turns on their lights and starts cooking dinner. So we are prepared to handle that load, which in the middle of the night is nowhere near that. So there's all that load that's ready to go. So yeah, that would be the ideal time. And that's the most cost effective time for people to charge, which is why you see those cheaper residential overnight rates. As we get more solar onto the grid, we have a lot, we're gonna have a lot more power in the afternoon. So it could be that you'll start to see cheaper times to, to charge in the middle of the day because that's when the solar is online. There's gonna be mobile trailers that'll have huge battery stacks that will be able to park in a, a football stadium. Some of the technologies we're looking at now uh, are really sensational where the electricity is stored in a unit. It looks like the size of your air conditioning compressor outside, you know, it's not huge. And then, so it can, it, it sucks in and stores electricity at the absolute cheapest non-peak hours. And when it dispenses it, it doesn't matter what time of day because the mm -hmm. energy was stored at the non-peak hours. And this is just a couple years into the journey. So think about how much the vehicles have advanced and then the charging infrastructure in terms of the battery technology, the software uh, that'll help manage the grid, um, you know, the intake into the, the capacity to intake in the vehicle, that's all going to progress as well. And actually just last week, there was an exciting announcement about the National Electric Highway Coalition. Yeah. And so this was a whole bunch of utilities that raised their hands and said, we're going to figure out how to do this all together. So what we're looking at is how do we connect the dots for people who are doing that road trip? And one of the most specific ones is across state lines. You know, the, the, the vehicle got invented and then, of course, Henry Ford kind of automated the assembly line and made it available to the masses back in the early 1900s. And the infrastructure wasn't there either then uh, in terms of, you know, the, but Eisenhower put in the interstate highway system, gas stations popped up first, you know, locally and then, you know, across that interstate highway system. And then we became, you know, the, you know, a crazy auto driven culture. There wasn't any going back to the horses then just because it was hard to do. I mean, we was, we was going to move ahead with automobiles and the electric revolution's coming. I mean, we can argue about how quick, how fast, uh, how expensive, uh, but it's coming and America will respond, I think, the way we always have with a lot of innovation and cooperation and this infrastructure will go in.